Greetings to all of you and God bless you today. I hope everybody's doing well. This is probably gonna be the most important video and the most serious video that I will ever do. I really have a heavy heart for people today, folks. If you're watching this video right now, I do, I love you. I love you more than you can possibly imagine. And if you're watching this video right now, it's because you're either one of my subscribers or one of my subscribers has sent you this video because they love you and they care about where you're gonna spend your eternity. Because right now I look at a world that's lost. I look at a world that is so fixated and so focused on the here, on the now, what's five years from now, what's 10 years from now. They're focused so much on their treasures on earth, their vacations that are coming up, what's in their 401k, but they could care less. They could care less about where they're gonna spend an eternity. When the reality is, any of us, no matter who you are watching this video, any of us can breathe our last breath and we can die at any moment. And that's why the title of this video, and it's very serious, the title of this video is, Do Not Wait Until Your Death Date to Believe in Jesus Christ. We all know people, myself included, that have died suddenly. Heck, just over the last couple of years, I know several people. Some were my age, some were a little older, some were a little younger that died suddenly. I had one of my family members recently call me and tell me one of their close coworkers that they worked with that was 30 years old died suddenly. <clears throat> they wake up, they woke up to begin their day and tragedy struck and they never made it to the next day. We all know people that have died suddenly. Again, that woke up to begin their day and the next day never came for them. Whatever it was, whether it was a heart attack, a brain aneurysm, they were crossing the street and they got hit, or if it was a major, uh, major car accident, whatever, or a natural disaster, we just, folks, things are happening each and every day. People are dying suddenly. Again, whether it was a car accident, a heart attack, a brain aneurysm, or something, some other sudden event, the bottom line, again, is they woke up. They were expecting to go to work and come home, or they woke up expecting to do whatever they were supposed to do that day and sudden death came. You know, and unfortunately, a majority of the world's population, they have this attitude. Well, you know what? I'm going to wait until my, I'm on my deathbed and then I'm going to make it right with God. No, 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 no. This is very serious because you may never be on a deathbed. Sudden death can come for you at any moment. Again, that's why the title of this video is do not wait until your deathbed to believe in Jesus Christ. Because again, if you're somebody that has the attitude that, you know what, I'm going to live my life, and then when I'm on my deathbed, I'm going to try to make it right with God. No, 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 because you may never get on that deathbed. Sudden death could happen to any of us at any time. This is an issue that you need to settle right here and right now. You're watching this video right here, right now, for a reason. Your next breath, your next second is not promised. In fact, let me share with you some statistics that I came across recently. Approximately 56 million people die each year. Approximately 4,700,000 people die each month. Approximately 150,000 people die each day. Approximately 100 people die each minute. Nearly two people die every second. And you know what, folks? A lot of these deaths are sudden. People that woke up to begin their day, to do whatever they were doing, and the next day never came for them because something happened suddenly and they died. They never made it to a deathbed. It came upon them suddenly. And the reality is the Holy Bible reveals the truth about, about what happens after you die. You know, I heard about all the different views on life after death growing up before I was saved. Uh, I had heard about atheism, which is basically nothing happens. You go back into the ground, so live it up. Reincarnation, which is very popular, and it's an exploding belief in the world today, which is basically you live, you die, you can come back as other people, live multiple lives, or you can come back as animals or parts of nature. And that's something that is uh, exploding today, people believing in reincarnation. Purgatory, which is mainly taught in the Roman Catholic Church, which is basically like once you die, you got to kind of, you know, hang out in this purgatory level and get it right before you can go to heaven. The New Age movement, which is teaching all sorts of different, different junk on what happens after you die. And all the world's, other world's major religions 
all have differing views, again, on, on what happens after you die. It wasn't until I read through the Holy Bible and saw that everything in there is perfect and that it is truly the Word of God that I saw the Bible reveals all truths and it tells you everything about what happens after you die and the truth about heaven and hell. The world's not going to tell it to you. It's found in the Word of God, the Holy Bible. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says this in the Holy Bible. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And boy, is this true. When I read through the Holy Bible and I saw everything in there was perfect, it was true. It changed my life. I got saved because I saw everything in there was perfect. It was his word. And it told me everything I needed to know about this life and what comes after. And the same can be for you today. The word of God is quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Yes, people will say, well, the Bible was written by men. Yes, the Bible was written by men, but God spoke through them as they wrote down the words. In 2 Timothy 3.16, the Apostle Paul says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, reproof for correction, for instruction in righteousness. God spoke through them as they penned down those words. It's his word. It's God's holy word, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Then in 2 Peter 1.21, we read the following, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Bible reveals all truths. It's so perfect. It's breathing. It's living. It's powerful. And it transforms lives. The reality is the Bible reveals that this life here on earth, it is so, so short compared to what comes next. In James chapter 4, verse 14, we read the following, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. So again, this life here on earth is nothing. It's a little speckle. It's a little dot of eternity. What comes next? It's forever. It's eternity. Ecclesiastes 3. We read the following, the first couple verses. Ecclesiastes 3. Verse 1 to 2, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up which is planted. So again, your life is but a vapor. Your next second, your next breath is not, uh, not promised. Again, like it says in Ecclesiastes, to everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to, born, to be born, and a time to die. God knows your every step. God knows the exact days of your life. We don't, which is why you need to take this serious right here and right now, and not wait till you're on your deathbed to get right with God, because your deathbed may never come. Your death date could be as soon as this very moment. And once your life ends here, that's it. There is no coming back and living as other animals or other people. This is it. We got one shot to get it right. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 to 28, we read the following. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. I believe if, uh, we're in the generation that's going to be raptured. So I do believe there's a generation of believers, and I believe we are that generation, that will not die. But we're going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air as he takes us to heaven while the tribulation period occurs on the earth. But the focus of this video is that even me, any of us, we are not promised our next breath here. We are not promised our next second. And if you're watching this video right now and you have the attitude, I'm just going to wait until my deathbed to try to make it right with God, please, again, you may never make it to your deathbed. 
Tragedy is striking people every day. They're waking up, they're expecting, they're planning out their future, and the next day never comes for them. You're not promised your next second. So if you're watching this video right now, please take this message very serious because here's the reality. Now is the accepted time. Now, this very day, is the day of salvation. So what do you have to do to be saved? Again, the time is right now. Not wait until you're on your deathbed because your next second is not promised. So what do you have to do to be saved? Well, the Apostle Paul gives you the formula in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. Let's read it together. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So first you have to hear the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. If you've never heard the gospel of your salvation before, it's right on the screen in the parentheses there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. This is the gospel of your salvation that you believe, that you're putting your faith in your trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ for you on that cross at Calvary. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, paying your sin debt in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, so you could be forgiven of your sins and be with him forever in heaven. So the gospel of your salvation, again, is believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he resurrected. He rose from the dead on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And if you're still kind of confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all fall short of the glory of God. We serve a holy, a just, and a perfect God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves us so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for us on the cross at Calvary, paying the sin debt that we could never pay on our own. He put, took it on himself. He became sin for us. Be paid it with his blood so we could be reconciled back to him so we could be forgiven of our sins and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. But going back to Ephesians 1.13, after you hear the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, which is again, Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose from the dead on the third day. Once you hear that and you believe it, you put your faith in your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, believing he paid it all for you, with his blood on the cross and in his death, burial, and resurrection, it says next in Ephesians 1.13, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. So once you believe the gospel of your salvation, you put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, you're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, there is a spiritual baptism that occurs when you believe the gospel of your salvation. You're baptized into the body of Christ. And on the bottom of the screen there, we read in Ephesians 4.30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. But right here and right now, it's time to repent, to believe the gospel, and to be converted to new life in Jesus Christ. To repent. It means metanoia. It means to change your mind. What are you changing your mind about? You're changing your mind about who God is. You're going from unbelief, dead in your sins, to belief, a new creature in Christ. And you're agreeing with God about your sin condition, that you're a sinner in need of a Savior, that you can't save yourself, that Jesus Christ did it all for you on the cross of Calvary by shedding his precious blood. And you're believing and you're putting your faith and your trust again in the blood of Jesus Christ and in the gospel of your salvation, which is Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he resurrected. He rose from the dead on the third day, as it is written in the scriptures. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places. And you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. It's horrific. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But I can't make that decision for you. You have free will. Right? If you die rejecting Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity. And I'm going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and he's the only name that's going to save you. We read in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name 
under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. In John 14, 6, we read, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In 1 Timothy 2, 5, we read, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So the Virgin Mary is not going to save you. Buddha is not going to save you. Allah is not going to save you. Muhammad's not going to save you. Dead saints are not going to save you. The New Age movement is not going to save you. Religion is not going to save you. Your own works, you trying to be a good person and earn your way there, that is not going to save you. There is only one way to the kingdom of heaven and one name that will save you, and that is Jesus Christ and him alone. This is crucial right here and right now because your next breath is not promised. Again, if you have that attitude of I'm going to wait until my deathbed to try to get it right, but I'm going to live my life, I'm just going to live my life and do my thing until my deathbed, and then I'm going to make it right with God, your deathbed may never come. Your next second is not promised. People are dying every day suddenly. And then, again, they're either going to go to heaven or they're going to go to hell. Jesus is the only way to heaven. So I'm imploring you today, if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ, don't wait another second. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Jesus loves you. And he demonstrates his love for you for what he did for you on the cross. In Romans 5, 8, the Apostle Paul says, But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Be reconciled to God right now. But that's only possible through his son, Jesus Christ. But tomorrow may never come for you. Your next second may not come for you. So settle the issue right now and tell somebody about it. And I look forward to meeting you in heaven one day when that day does come. God bless you all.